CDs, baby. Greetings, one and all, and welcome to Tom's Hit Parade. Uh, sorry about the road noise, but I wanted to get a good shot of the marquee of the store. Uh, yeah, I am at the Everyday Music location on Sandy in Portland, as you can tell. Uh, I'm, yeah, I didn't think I was going to pull off a Portland trip this time, but uh, yeah, I was able to. Uh, I'm here for two and a half days. I got here yesterday around lunchtime after my, what was probably my last meal ever at the Byways Cafe downtown. It's going to be really sad to see this place go. Um, you know, just another loss in 2019 that uh, has made it kind of a crappy year. But, well, well the place that makes one of the absolutely best club sandwiches I've, I've ever had in my life. So, uh, that's it for the Byways. Uh, uh, I went to the Everyday Music over on uh, Burnside downtown and uh, found a few good things. I had a bag full of CDs, about half of which I still have slung over my shoulder. Uh, and they, they bought about half of them and gave me 24 bucks for them, so hell yeah. Uh, and I found a bunch of good stuff. My budget is a little tighter this time uh, than usual, so my strategy has been I start in the bargain section uh, and uh, I found a bunch of good stuff. Uh, I, I've been after a lot of CDs from, you know, late 80s through early 2000s, and the bargain section, as you probably know, is loaded with those. So I came out with a bunch of good stuff, a couple of B-52s, and Amy Grant, you know, a bunch of CDs for, uh, probably 10, 12 CDs I got for $1.95 each, and uh, yeah, so I've been doing pretty well so far, so yeah, we'll see if uh, the Sandy EM wants any more of my CDs, uh, cast off CDs, and I'll see what I can find here, uh, but yeah, oh, and yesterday I, I did get a couple of, uh, you know, regular priced CDs, uh, used CDs, I filled the remaining gaps in my Neon Trees discography. I've now got all three of their CDs. Everyday Music here doesn't open till 10. Uh, I tried to shoot it so that I was here right about the time they opened, but I, I overshot my uh, journey here, or undershot, whichever, whatever the case would be, by about 20 minutes. So yeah, it's still about, what, about 15 minutes till they open. Okay, long as we're killing time here, let's take a look at the posters they have on in the windows of Everyday Music Sandy. See the Michael Jackson poster there that is extremely bleached by the sun. I actually have that uh, version of that I got from Skips. Uh, I just don't have the wall space to put. I got like four of these big, what was it, four foot by four foot uh, poster things that uh, in my room I just don't have the wall space to put them up. And it looks like uh, John Legend's uh, Love in the Future. Is that what it is? Uh, oh, key eye paperwork. I can't read these because the picture from the camera is backwards, obviously. So. Blitz and Trapper. And interesting thing about Blitz and Trapper is uh, the brother of one of the band members actually works at one of the stores in Eugene, one of the smaller record stores that I don't mention much on my channel. Uh, Chromatics right here. But anyway, yeah, an interesting trivia note about Blitz and Trapper. Brainstorm and Bonobos. Bonobo? Bonobo. Never heard of them. Don't know what they sound like. And then the Strokes over there. And then what do we have here? I don't know. But it's a pretty picture of a waterfall. And then, yeah. Let's see. Uh, still a few minutes before they open. And see, so there are a couple of people waiting there at the door, like I am. Okay, I'm not at the door, but, you know, waiting. Isn't that Mariska Hargitay from Law & Order? That's what she looks like. Probably not. So, uh, yeah, after, after this, after this everyday music stop, I'm going to go have lunch at the City State Diner. I'm probably not going to vlog my food choices just because they're going to be pretty much repeats of uh, what I had uh, last December on my Portland vlog. Uh, yes, I'm, sometimes I'm a creature of habit when it comes to food. I go to mostly the same places. Sometimes I step out of my comfort zone and try something new, but it's usually I go to the same places. And about half the time I have the same thing, just because it was so good the last time. What can I say? But anyway, after lunch at the City State Diner, I'm going to go over to Music Millennium, and I will have a chance to go back to Everyday Music Downtown tomorrow. 
uh, Brett Denon. I've been wanting to pick up more of his stuff, and they've got a couple of his albums over there at the Everyday Music Downtown, so I might pick up, uh, if I don't find them for cheaper here. Oh, it looks like they're opening. If I don't find them for cheaper here or at Music Millennium, I will go back and pick them up there. And uh, what else? I can't think of anything else because, yay, the store's open, so talk to you later. Okay, just got done stuffing my gut at uh, the City State Diner, as you can see back here. Uh, yes, wonderful, wonderful sandwich. I uh, I had to have the count again. I swear that sandwich gets better and better every time I have it. Uh, it I described it in my last Portland video last December. Uh, just, I mean, just take a look at it. If it looks delicious, trust me, the picture doesn't do it justice. It's ten times as amazing as it looks. You got your thin sliced turkey and prosciutto, which is a cured ham for those of you who don't know it, uh, along with melted brie cheese, an apricot jam. All of this is on a hazelnut crusted kala French toast. I mean, come on. I am now heading over to Music Millennium. Uh, I, I found a bunch of good stuff over at uh, Everyday Music. Uh, plundered the bargain bin again and came out with Oh, six or eight CDs this time. Not as many in it as at the other location, but... Uh, and I just, yeah, it just occurred to me, uh, coming out of everyday music, that I have not been doing much in-store vlogging. I've mostly been talking about, uh, you know, vlogging as I'm walking from place to place. It just hasn't occurred to me to uh, vlog in-store. So uh, I'm, I might do that uh, at Music Money or... Uh, at Everyday Music, my return trip to Everyday Music downtown tomorrow, so so we'll see how that turns out. And, uh, yeah. I do like walking. It's I haven't been getting a lot of exercise. I've had this, this week off from work, and the uh, first couple of days was spent sitting at home on my computer, getting Canada Week videos edited and uploaded in time for them to, uh, to, uh, drop every day. So, uh, yeah, that's made me a little bit out of shape from walking. Um, I am still uh, holding steady at just about 30 pounds lighter than I was a year ago, so uh, yay me. Uh, and, let's see, 32nd Avenue next signal, so we're almost at Music Millennium. And I forgot to mention that uh, the uh, remaining stack of CDs that I brought up to trade in to sell to the stores, uh, Everyday Music over here took about two th the other two-thirds of what was left, and they gave me 12 bucks for them, so I've only got eight or ten CDs left out of the bunch that I brought in to sell, so uh, I did quite well on that. Uh, at 24 and 12, that's 36 bucks in trade credit that I didn't have to uh, pull out of my wallet, so uh, yay. So, Music Millennium is coming up here. You can see what I am looking at. See right there? The Music Millennium sign, yay. It feels like home when I walk into Music Millennium. Uh, so here we go. Talk to you soon. Okay, so I spent uh, about twice as much time there as I intended to spend, uh, even though I am ahead of schedule. Uh, yeah, as I've mentioned before, I usually about half the time that I spend in a store is spent trying to decide what to take to the register and what to put back on the shelf. Uh, in the interest of saving as much money as possible, but I think I came out of there pretty good. Uh, I spent more there because uh, Music Millennium's uh, bargain sections are not uh, nearly as big as uh, everyday music. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm, I've got enough time I'm going to head back to everyday music over here to uh, look for something I forgot to look for and to see if I really want to pick up I think it was two CDs, or uh, assuming I find what I forgot to look for could be more than two, uh, and if I want to pick those up or not. So, uh, stay tuned for more. Okay, progress made. Significant progress made. Uh, I completed, actually, today, my Brett Denon and Madeleine Peru discographies. Well, missing a couple of very recent albums from Madeleine Peru, but uh, the first two-thirds three quarters of her discography I now have, so, and I'm more or less within budget, so I've uh, done pretty well, so, uh, and as you can see, it is sundown, so, uh, day one is over, so, uh, let's see what I can find day two, it will be the cleanup day of the source, so, uh, talk to you soon. 
So yes, I am back from another trip to Portland. It was uh, a lot of fun as usual. Honestly, if you've never been to Portland and you are a CD and record shopper, you've got to go. It's just basically a mecca for music shopping. Uh, I have so much fun. Every time I go there, I, I have fun I, and I don't want to come home. But uh, oh, and by the way, excuse the scruff on here, but uh, no, I haven't not I have not shaved all week. Uh, I don't want to shave until I absolutely have to because uh, well, I don't want my vacation to be over until it absolutely has to be, and that's that. That will be tomorrow morning when I have to go back to work. You know, you know, work that annoying thing that makes things like these vacations possible, and my music shopping in general possible. So, but yeah, I had a whole lot of fun, as I said. And uh, me and my big mouth, I kept talking about upping my vlogging game. I put a bigger memory card in my phone for the sole purpose, well, primary purpose, of filming a whole lot of footage and. I kind of, well, what you just saw is basically all that I filmed. I, for some reason, I, it just didn't occur to me until late in my trip to, to film anything inside the stores. I just, you know, it was, well, any of you who know, who create content on YouTube, you know that you have to be in the zone, you have to be in the frame of mind to do something uh, creative. Otherwise, it's just not going to turn out like you want it to. And uh, that was part of the reason, just for some reason, I was in and out of being in the mood to vlog during my trip. And uh, obviously, as you saw, standing out in front of the stores or walking from one store to another, I was in the zone for vlogging. But uh, when it came to being inside the stores, for some reason, it just it just wasn't on my mind. And I could kick myself for that because uh, next trip, I will be giving you a picture of how big the bargain CD sections of the stores are, uh, particularly the everyday music stores. It will blow your mind. I mean, CDs for almost as far as the eye can see, for most of them $1.99 or less. But yeah, I will take videos of those bargain sections next time. But hey, it gives me an excuse to for my next Portland trip to up my vlogging game, as I said I was going to this time. But anyway, oh, and that uh, CD Baby clip that you saw at the very beginning, uh, yeah, apparently, see, what my brother and I do is on the days that we go into town, we drive up to a little shopping center. Well, not a little shopping center. It's out near the Portland airport. It's called Cascade Station. We park there, go to the train, and take the train into town because it's honestly, frankly, it's much easier to navigate downtown Portland by foot and transit than it is by car. I mean, you know, you don't have to deal with the traffic and you don't have to deal with finding a place to park and having the money to park. I mean, you spend money on transit, but still, it's, it's kind of, you know, six of one, half dozen, half dozen of the other, you know. But anyway, I was standing there uh, on my way to the uh, uh, train station, the light rail station there up by the airport at Cascade Station and I saw this CD Baby logo on the side of this building here and apparently that is where the headquarters of CD Baby is and it's a it's a, an independent music distributor in case you don't aren't uh, aware of them and as their name implies they used to primarily distribute CDs in physical form but of course now with digital taking everything over they've switched to primarily digital distribution uh, I I think I bought one CD from them years ago uh, but haven't shopped there since. I haven't even really explored the catalog to see what's on there. And, and I didn't, I thought about stopping by there just to see if they actually had a physical store or some kind of a showroom where you could flip through CDs and buy them on the spot, but uh, well, I didn't have the time and I had other things I wanted to do, which you saw and which you will see here in, uh, I will review the things that I picked up at uh, my on my travels today, or this week. Starting with a couple of books that I found at Powell's. Uh, I found them for $10.98 a piece, which is a pretty darn good price considering that they are both nicely bound and presented hardcovers. Uh, first one is Sound and Vision, a guide to music's cult artists from punk, alternative, and indie through to hip-hop, dance music, and beyond. And it's really cool. The definition of cult artists, uh, at least in terms of this artist's def uh, this author's definition, uh, is a little iffy. I mean, they've got, you know, Kendrick Lamar, St. Vincent, Tame Impala, um, Kanye West. I mean, you can't really get any more uncult, you know, any more mainstream than Kanye West, really. Uh, the Strokes, The White Stripes. So, you know, the definition of cult artists is a little uh, questionable, a little subjective, but uh, the presentation of this book was just, it just cried out for me to get it. And it's, it's relatively recent. 2016 is when it was published. And yeah, they talk about um, various artists, you know, give the top album and trivia and a bunch of other stuff about, oh, must be a hundred, more than a hundred artists in here. 
And one of the cool things about it is you can see here they do, usually it's two pages, sometimes it's just one page about each artist, and it's illustrated not with photographs, but with uh, illustrations, So, which is very, very cool. Uh, you know, Arctic monkeys, I mean, so this is going to be a whole lot of fun to look through. Um, to you know, I, I've been curious about some artists that I have just not uh, explored yet in terms of their albums and their, out, their output. So perusing this will give me the opportunity to do so. So uh, you know, 1098 cannot beat the price. And the other 1098 hardcover book that I got is BBC Radio 6 Music's Alternative Jukebox. Uh, 500 extraordinary tracks that tell the story of alternative music. So. Uh, and it's, it's, you know, the selection of tracks can be a little subjective, as is, you know, the case with just about any book. The the art, uh, author or editor of the book, you know, they'll put their own spin on stuff. But this is, uh, you know, presented by uh, a British source, so it's going to be a little bit more different than the than, than a typical American selection of art, of uh, tracks. So, uh, and it's separated by decade and talks, you know, gives a little one or two paragraph uh, write up about each track. So. And this, I've been wanting to do more streaming. This will, um, I bought this on the expectation that, you know, reading this book and, you know, reading about tracks that make the book makes sound interesting will give persuade, persuade me to stream them and, uh, you know, up my up my streaming game as I tried to up my vlogging game this time. But anyway, I, I as you know, and again, 1098, couldn't pass it up. So, uh, yeah. and now on to the main attraction. The CDs, yes. I almost never look for records up there in Portland. I'm not sure why. I don't. I guess it's probably just the frame of mind that I'm not looking for records. And you know, CDs. When it comes to transport from Portland back down to home, CDs are sturdier and uh, less fragile than records. So that's probably the main reason. Uh, but yeah, I uh, found a bunch of CDs. And as I mentioned in one of my clips uh, there on location clips, my strategy this time was to begin with the bargain sections. Uh, with you know the most CDs in the bargain sections are $1.98, $1.99 or less. Occasionally you'll find one for $2.95 or $3.95 or something. But uh, yeah, uh, probably half of the CDs that I got were from the bargain section. So yeah, I, I made some pretty good uh, pretty good buys. And yeah, if you're looking for, as I think I also said in my clip, uh, CDs from the 90s to uh, early 2000s, you're going to find loads of them in the bargain section because that was that was the CDs heyday and you know with everybody dumping their CDs in favor of digital or whatnot it's never been a better time really to uh, go looking for CDs at bargain basement prices found a bunch of stuff I was looking for and stuff I wasn't looking for filled some miscellaneous gaps in my collection uh, got B-52s a couple of their albums good stuff and uh, Cosmic Thing kind of wanted to have those and a uh, um, one evening when my brother and I were staying at the host uh, whose house we stay at up there, a uh, documentary, one hour documentary came on about Metallica's Black Album. I'd forgotten how many great songs are on there. I am not much of a Metallica fan, but I've got their s and album, which is freaking awesome. I talked about it in my last Backtracks. Check that album out if you haven't yet. Even if you're not a Metallica fan, it, it will blow your mind. But anyway, I looked for the Black Album and uh, couldn't find it. Well, I could find it uh, new and sealed for twelve ninety nine, which is not a huge bargain. I figure I can buy that one of my days on my lunch break from work at House of Records, uh, probably for that price or right around it. So, But I did find in the bargain section two other Metallica, Metallica albums, Load and Reload, for $1.95 each. It's like, why the heck not? Uh, so yeah, I thought I would, you know, start exploring Metallica more. Yeah. But anyway, uh, here's one that will look familiar. Uh, Sam Roberts, We Were Born in a Flame. And I found this, the reason I bought this was it actually is a different pressing than the one I have and showed off in my Canada Week. It's got two bonus tracks on it. So, uh, yes, and one of my friends may be the beneficiary of the uh, spare copy of the other pressing that uh, I have that I can now get rid of. And then um, a few jazz albums I found in the bargain section of jazz. The Preservation Hall Jazz Band. They are a New Orleans jazz outfit that's been around for a long time. I first, uh, they first came to my attention with a, I think it was a Record Store Day EP that Paolo Nutini put out, in which he was backed by the Preservation Hall Jazz Band. So for $1.95 I figured I'd pick this up. Um, given the time frame between the Paolo Nutini recordings and this album, which was put out in 1989, they could be, for all I know, they could be a completely different set of members. Uh, musicians in the band, but all the same, I wanted to give these guys a try because uh, 
the Paolo Nutini album uh, EP impressed me with what they put out. So, uh, and another one here, uh, Toots Thielemans, and I think I'm pronouncing that properly, but if I'm not, and if you know how to pronounce it, please correct me. But anyway, yeah, Toots Thielemans is, uh, I think I mentioned him in, I think that was also in Backtracks last month. He is a harmonica player. I, I assume that by the photograph, uh, his harmonica playing is featured on this co compilation, but he's also a guitarist. But yeah, this, I mean, it didn't take me long to read the track listing of featured artist Liz Wright, Madeline Peru, and Jamie Cullum. It's like, I stopped there and had, knew I had to pick this album up, so and I'm going to have a lot of fun listening to this. Uh, all com compositions by Harold Arlen. They're all songs by Harold, Harold Arlen that uh, they cover in here. But yeah, that, as I said, that array of guest vocalists, this was a no-brainer. I had to pick it up. And then an interesting one. I've seen it before, but I think only online, like on Amazon and whatnot. Sketches on Star Wars it is actually jazz renditions of some of the themes from the Star Wars movies. So I figured, why the hell not? Uh, I, I've got to pick it up and uh, check it out, because I absolutely, you know me, I absolutely love the Star Wars music. So uh, too curious to not hear a different take on John Williams' themes from the Star Wars movies. And then a bunch of things that I just uh, was not looking for, but uh, just their pull was just too ir irresistible to not bring home for that bargain basement price of $1.98 each. Or dollar ninety-five each, excuse me. Uh, Elvis Costello and Burt Bacharach. They did an, an album collaborated together, painted from memory. I figured I had to give this one a try. I've I've never listened to any of it, but uh, hey, with Burt Bacharach, how can you go wrong? It's he would have to really do something awful to, uh, which is not characteristic of him to to uh, make that not worth picking up for a dollar ninety-eight. And then uh, Peter Bjorn and John. I actually was not looking for this, so uh, for fortunately for some reason I had my wits about me when I thumbed through it in the bargain section and said, aha, gotta get it. Anyway, uh, I had listened to a song from this album on the music at a restaurant a few weeks ago, and it sounded really cool. It's, it kind of caught my ear. It was a little earwormy, so I decided to pick this album up and uh, give these guys a try. Uh, this is their album Writer's Block, by the way. And then uh, there's a band from the uh, early 2000s, I think it was, late 90s, early 2000s, called The Calling. Uh, they only put out two albums, I believe, and uh, but I, I enjoyed them both. The lead singer was a guy by the name of Alex Band, so I got his uh, solo album, uh, which was put out after The Callings, two albums. Uh, so yeah, had to pick that up. Because he's one of those uh, um, unique, low baritone voices that just grabs your ear that I really, really enjoy. And then uh, this guy I'd actually never heard of before, Mark O'Connor. Uh, he is apparently he's actually a fiddler. Not a violinist, a fiddler, although I don't know exactly technically what the difference is between violin and fiddle. i got to look that up. But uh, yeah, imagine the sheer exuberance of traditional American fiddling blended with the expressive depth of and rich texture of classical music. So that was enough to uh, get my attention, and two discs for $1.95. And another thing that, this is going to sound a little silly, but another thing that kind of grabbed me about this was it's part of uh, the Sony Label Group's Essential series, and I have, I have quite a little collection of them. Uh, couple of dozen probably, maybe a few dozen, and I intend to do a video at some point about the various series that I have, you know, compilation series that I've got, uh, the essentials being one of them, and I'll do that at some point, but yeah, those two factors, you know, the, the uniqueness of the blurb on the back here, plus the fact that it was an essentials volume, decided to pick it up, give it a try. I mean, you know, classical music is something, one of those things that uh, I can sometimes use when I need to relax, unwind, after a stressful day. Or, or during a stressful day, I can put it on the, in the background at work, and nobody will mind. So, uh, yeah. <clears throat> and then Amy Grant, uh, this is her album, uh, Behind the Eyes. This was her album after uh, Heart in Motion and House of Love. So this is like the third volume in her secular trilogy, as it were. Uh, so I decided, you know, hey, pick it up. I don't recognize any of the song titles on the back, so, but, uh, you know, who knows? Since I was such a fan of those two previous albums, who knows how many good tracks are going to be lurking hidden on this CD, too. So, What do you got to lose, except for the $1.95 that you're paying for? And speaking of artists that started out as Christian artists, or uh, you know, built their following as Christian artists, there's a guy named Matt Wirtz, who uh, I don't think I've mentioned uh, his albums before on my, on my uh, channel, but his... Uh, secular breakthrough, well, it's not really a breakthrough because he's never gotten really popular, but uh, the, the album that caught my attention is called Everything In Between, and it was put out in 2002, I think, somewhere around there, 
really really good incredibly hooky songs throughout so if you're you know if you're in the mood to listen to something new uh, check out matt wirt's everything in between but yeah i've got his album i've had it for a long time and the uh not the f immediate follow-up but uh, one after that i think called weights and wings i've got both of those two and i really enjoy them and i found a couple of his early titles some days and 23 places and they were both i mean this one was only 95 cents and this one was a dollar and eighty-five, so I figured I'd go ahead and explore him a little bit more deeply. I don't know how Christian these two titles are, uh, but hey, you know, for for three dollars between the two of these, you know, why not try them? So yeah, uh, great, great stuff. All of that in the bargain bin, and oh, a uh, couple more things in the bargain bin. Uh, one of my primary goals up there in Portland this time was to get as many of uh, Madeline Peru's CDs as I could. I had her. Uh, greatest hits for quite a while a two disc set of our greatest hits and i enjoyed that so much that frankly i decided a couple months ago hey i'm gonna go ahead and look for her studio albums because you know if i like that selection of cuts that much then i'm gonna like her studio albums i'm sure so found two of her studio albums in the bargain section careless love and bare bones so i picked those up so yeah so much in the bargain section and uh, uh moving on into the the regular priced used CDs, the ones that were, you know, anywhere from most of them actually I got were five dollars a piece, so they, even that's not bad. You know, five between five and eight bucks, most of them were. Uh, I found a few more Madeline Peru, and I this pretty much catches me up on her, except for a couple of her more recent albums. The two albums before Anthem, I think, are the ones that I'm missing as of right now. But I found a few more, uh, Half the Perfect World, and uh, Standing on the Rooftop, and The Blue Room. So. Got a good little uh, head start on my Madeleine Peru discography. And another one that I decided, I think I pretty much decided to do this uh, off the cuff w when I was there up in Portland, uh, was Brett Denon. I have gotten into him lately. I've picked up, uh, had two of his CDs. I had one of his debut album, or uh, not his debut, but the one after it. His debut was really kind of hard to find. It's on an ind independent label, but the one after that. Uh, so much more is the title of that one had that for a long time and recently in the last year picked up the his follow-up hope for the hopeless i think that's the name of it and so i decided to uh, keep going from there i picked up lover boy and uh, smoke and mirrors and por favor so which which is not spanish language tracks by the way so yeah i've got a good head start i actually have all of his albums except that hard to find debut uh, of brett denon so I'm going to enjoy listening to his discography more. And then we uh, just got done with Canada Week, but I thought I would give a shout out to a few more artists. My brain apparently when I was up in Portland was still on Canada Week because I picked up uh, subsequent albums or albums I was missing by a few Canadian artists that I mentioned last week. Uh, Alanis Morissette, her Flavors of Entanglement, that is the next studio album that I was missing out of her discography. So this I think makes the fifth studio album, album of hers that I've got. So I figured I'd had to try that out. And then, uh, as I think I mentioned in one of my clips, uh, Amanda Marshall's sophomore album, Tuesday's Child, was able to pick that up. And then after waiting for, what, 10 years? Nine years, it was put out in 2010. Dragging my feet, waiting nine years to pick this up, uh, I finally filled the last gap in my studio albums collection of uh, Rufus Wainwright, All Days Are Nights, Songs for Lulu. And uh, the reason I waited so long to pick this up was because I've heard Although I've never actually listened to any of the tracks, so I don't know, uh, you know, stupid me. I tell you, I'm just starting to get into streaming. And what, go figure. Old habits are hard to break. So uh, anyway, that was the reason I never picked it up, picked it up until now was because I, I kept hearing that it was much more somber and darker than his other albums. But now I've got the chance to figure out for myself. And I really got into Neon Trees uh, recently, so I picked up their two albums that I was missing. A picture show and habits so yeah. can't wait to listen to those and then uh, one of the few new cds that i picked up new and sealed was the last uh album i was missing in my keen discography night train their eight track ep or album depending on what your threshold of the number of tracks is to delineate between eps and albums uh but yeah i, I it was on sale for 5.99 brand new uh, so regular price was 11.99 so why wait to get that uh, but yeah i know it's got more uh hip-hop rap elements in it than their other albums but uh you know it's keen so it's like it kind of nags me sometimes when i'm missing just one album in an artist's discography 
and then the latest entry in my uh, artists I tried out many years ago and got cold on but decided to give another try to after several years department. Uh, Matt Carney. Uh, I picked up his two major label albums, Nothing Left to Lose and City of Black and White. Decided to uh, give them a try uh, after several years. And one reason I decided to give him another try is he actually uh, has a local connection. He actually grew up in Eugene, went to uh, one of the high schools in Eugene. So it's like, why not give him the benefit, benefit of the doubt? You know, really, come on. And I guess one thing that turned me off from him uh, all those years ago was he had elements of rap and hip hop in his sound, which was a turnoff for me back then. But you know, now that I've exposed myself to Post Malone and Anderson Pack and a couple of other artists recently, I've uh, started to develop much more of a tolerance for hip hop. So uh, you know, give him another try. Why not? And then this one I'd kind of been looking for for a while, uh, a Santana album, Guitar Heaven. It's got great, uh, you know, I, with. Um, my recent addiction to uh, Joe Satriani, I've really gotten into rock guitar, and this kind of throws a spotlight on guitar rock songs. So, And the um, guest artists on here, the guest vocalists, Rob Thomas, uh, Chris Daughtry, but uh, yeah, uh, Pat Monahan, Joe Cocker, Johnny Lang. I, I really love Johnny Lang's vocals, so it's like, why did I wait this long to pick this album up? So, And another one I decided to pick up, uh, I mentioned him in Backtracks uh, a few months ago, uh, his the album's anniversary came by, of course. That's why I mentioned it in Backtracks. Uh, I, I decided the more I looked up and read about it, uh, the more I decided I wanted to give this album a good listen. Uh, Joe Cocker's debut, uh, with a little help my, from my friends, it's the remastered edition that has two bonus tracks on it. So I thought it was time to pick that up. And then one that I was not looking for, uh, but uh, saw there and uh, looked up on Wikipedia and other sources on my phone and thought, hey, I'll give this guy a try. Morgan, uh, spelled M-O-R-G-X-N. Uh, he's uh, yeah, an artist that uh, is uh, LGBTQ, part of the LGBTQ community, and just se seemed really intriguing, and I uh, listened to a couple of his tracks on uh, uh, YouTube, liked what I heard, so decided, hey, go ahead and pick it up, give him a try. And then the highlight of my finds there, one that I almost missed, uh, and I actually, the, the reason I almost missed it was uh, at the Everyday Music stores, and actually also at Music Millennium, but this is where I found it was Everyday Music, the newly arrived used CDs uh, are in a separate section, uh, you know, sorted by date, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, etc. And I kept looking in the regular A to Z rock section and kept coming up empty headed, and so I thought, you know what, I'll go ahead and give it a try, look through the newly arrived section, and by golly, they had it, blew me away. Yes, uh, Weezer's Blue Album, the deluxe version, for $8.50. Uh, the disc one has a few little blemishes on it, but for $8.50, that was worth it. And uh, it's just I was just overjoyed having found it, yes, because of my recent uh, rediscovery of Weezer. I had to pick this up. So, yeah, one the, as I said, the highlight of my finds there at uh, my, in my visit to Portland. Whew, that was exhausting. I uh, hope I didn't go through those too fast for you. But, uh, yeah, that was the uh, dazzling array of sounds and sites with the two books that I found. Uh, stuff that I came home with from my latest trip to Portland. It was a very productive and fun trip. Uh, yes, as I've said time and time again, uh, Portland is the place to go if you uh, love shopping for music, CDs, and records. Uh, you got to go there if you don't pass up the opportunity to go there. But yes, anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed this little uh, recap of my Portland trip. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Suggestions, questions, constructive criticisms, lay them on me in the comment section below. Also, scroll down to the description for a link to my Twitter feed and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.